Hi, good morning. My name is Monica Ramos. I am supporting UNICEF as the WASH Working Group Coordinator. Today, Tim Grieve, uh, the Senior WASH Advisor for the WASH and Emergencies Team from New York, could not be with us. He's the chair for the working group, so I'm presenting on his behalf. Um, quickly, just to give uh, some background to the WASH Working Group, UNICEF's been leading the WASH Working Group since 2017, and we have currently around 70 partners that are involved with the WASH Working Group that consist of implementing partners, research institutes, donors, and public-private partnerships. We recently had our fourth meeting here in February, uh, so just a few months ago, and we had also quite a full room, so it's great to see a lot more people here. Today, we're just going to look quickly at the achievements since um, June 2018. So we've focused a lot on country support and technical guidance. Um, we've tried really hard, and I think it's been reinforced by some of the other working groups, to really integrate with the, with the working groups and the GTFCC. So in terms of contributing to the development of the NCP framework, which will be covered uh, later on, as well as the offer of service, what can the working group do for countries? We've defined that. Uh, working on different guidance, so there's already been reference to the outbreak <coughs> response manual, as well as an environmental service surveillance note and also working a bit with the surveillance working group on the cholera hotspots identification document. Um, we've also worked to establish a human resources uh, database uh, and also to support deployment. So in the last, I'd say, about nine months through the support of GTFCC, we've deployed three consultants, one to Zambia, one to Zimbabwe, and currently one in South Sudan to, su to support the development of the WASH section of the NCP. Um, we were also involved in the review of the OCB requests. So we've had seven in the last year. Then in terms of WASH-specific documents, we've launched and published the WASH and IPC's uh, WASH and IPC and CTC's technical note, which was, uh, it's now up on the website, that was put up in January 2019. And as Kashmira was mentioning, we've already started elaboration, or elaborating the draft of the technical brief on WASH and OCB, and we'll cover that a bit more tomorrow. Um, in terms of the research agenda, that's also something that uh, the WASH Working Group has been focusing on. Uh, since the meeting in July that the colleagues have referred to, we have identified six priority areas, which are, are there on the, um, on the right-hand side of the table that, that show alignment with the overall GTFCC research plan. We have regular communications with a small group uh, that supports research. We also support the knowledge management and information sharing at global, regional, and country levels. So we do that in collaboration as well with the regional platforms that exist in West and Central Africa, East and South Africa, and the Middle East. And we also are, are really looking at, um, as well as the other working groups, how we can increase the generation of evidence base to inform our guidance and, and the different work that the partners are doing. Um, we're currently in the process as well as of further fleshing out the research plan, so the six areas Areas that we have there will eventually have um, projects, uh, research uh, questions, formulated <coughs> methodologies that then partners can access and, and move forward with uh, rolling out. In terms of advocacy and representation, uh, we've contributed to the technical content of the cholera investment case, so which really focusing on the promoting WASH investment in hotspots. We've also participated at key events, so some of these uh, Dominique have, has already highlighted, uh, country and regional meetings, both for Yemen and also for the launch of the regional platform in the Middle East. Um, we've been involved at all of the working group meetings for the GTFCC, so in the last year, the annual meeting, case management, OCV, and most recently, surveillance. Uh, we've also last year had a showcase event hosted by GTFCC at the World Water Week in August, and uh, we also provided uh, a presentation as part of a plenary session hosted by CDC at the University of North Carolina's Water and Health Conference in November. Um, in terms of our meeting in February, there were some key priorities or strategic areas that we defined for the coming year. We've been able to categorize these them thematically, so at looking really at the country support, really con to continue, to continue to focus on providing a technical review of the OCV request, as well as NCPs, as well to support deployment, uh, development, sorry, implementation and monitoring of NCPs, and, and to couple with that the deployment of WASH expertise. 
uh, we know that that's been uh, maybe a, a gap or a need that hasn't always been fulfilled. So we're really focusing on how we can make sure that expertise from WASH really gets to the field and is able to help elaborate out uh, the WASH section of the NCP. In terms of the technical guidance, Kashmir has already touched upon it. So we, we plan to finish the technical note on WASH and OCV, as well as have a checklist. We'll be doing that together with the OCV working group. We're also currently working on a training framework. So we have a few partners uh, in a small group where we're going through the existing trainings for WASH and cholera. We're coming up with a set of essential modules, as well as agreement on learning objectives, as well as technical content. So we won't, per se, have one standard training for wash and cholera, but we'll give some parameters or some boundaries to what is the what is really essential to 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 have in your wash and cholera uh, training package. We're also looking at the rapid response teams in terms of an operational guidance based on on the experience that the wash has had with RTS in the field. Um, in terms of research, we're moving very much in the same direction as the other working groups. Um, launching the research plan, continuing knowledge management, information sharing, and really focusing on the, the evidence base. So we have looked at having potentially small fact sheets developed, one pagers from our research institutes that can really operationalize the, uh, the technical work that's being done from research and bring that really to those who are implementing in the field. Um, and in terms of advocacy, we are looking to use the evidence from the investment case to advocate to governments and donors in order to prioritize investments in cholera hotspots. So we're really hoping to get some momentum off that, knowing that um, it, it washes quite a large chunk of, of, of the NCP. And lastly, representation at, at country and regional meetings as well as key events. So as Dominique mentioned, e, the Im Emergency Environmental Health Forum ha is happening here in Geneva in two weeks. Um, after that, we'll have the stand at the World Water Week, and then we continue to seek out other key events in order to, to advocate both on the behalf of GTFCC as well as uh, the WASH Working Group. These are some of our partners. It was hard to fit everybody on one, on one page, but just really this is a moment to, to thank all of the partners. Um, we really appreciate all of the inputs and, and the support provided by the various research institutes, the implementing partners, donors, as well as the public-private uh, partnerships that we have. So we look forward to continuing together in the coming year. Thank you.